Hello everybody, good day to you. Welcome back. Check this thing out. 2007 Chevrolet Monte Carlo Super Sport. Classic. Look at this bad unit right here. Very, very nice looking car. You don't see many of these things anymore. Uh, Cusper states, the vehicle overheated. They found the coolant was low. So uh, we're gonna swing this thing inside. I'm not gonna drive it because it came in overheating and I do not want to uh, risk additional overheat events what's our odometer tell us 74,835 miles on a 2007 this thing's clean wonder if it's for sale sunroof full power leather interior this is a nice car this was nice I mean it's nice today this thing was mint back in the day all original looking uh oh low tire pressure Oi. let's get on in here Backing up the auto. Let's go ahead and get this bad boy in the shop. Pop the hood and uh, see what we've got to work with. I believe this is uh, equipped with a 3.8 liter V6, transverse mounted, front wheel drive, bulletproof of an engine. Like these, uh, the Series 2 and Series 3, 3.8s, three uh, 3.1s, three and 3.4s were a phenomenal platform. Backing up, backing up. We're going straight in on the little big lift. We're going to back it up to the wall. I got a feeling I'm going to be under the hood. And as per my normular protocol around here, I don't like to work I'm under the hood pointed forward because there's not a whole boatload of space between the wall and the rack. So we're just going to do this uh, in reverse. It's kind of the, the way it's been going down lately. Backing up, backing up. And we'll leave enough space to get it on the rack if we need to. I think we're good right here. Parking's the auto. Turn down. Pew! And of course, popping in the hood. What do we have here under the Monty bonnet? Yep, -er. that's the 3.8 Series 3. Okay, so first things first, we were talking about overheating. So let's go ahead and pop the radiator cap and see what we've got going on down here. Ooh. Ooh, that's not good. That's not, oh, that's nasty. Look at that. Is that oil? Yeah, I don't know. Kinda, yeah, it smells like oil. Gross, all right. Okay, yeah, looking a little farther down in there. Uh, we can see there is, in fact, coolant, but it's a little low and probably displaced with oil. So we need to figure out how that oil got in there. Now, this being a Series 2 GM V6, I'm about 900% positive that it's uh, communicating at the uh, lower intake manifold gasket set. You see uh, see right down there, next to that little coolant elbow thing? That's our leaker. You can see oil running out of it. Uh, I also understand there was oil dripping down below, and uh, I think this intake is our primary offender. Yeah, I see some more over here. Oh yeah, there's a whole bunch of it right down there. See that down there? Okay, so we've got the classic lower intake symptom going on with this, uh, this particular uh, V6. Okay, let me go ahead and estimate this repair and uh, see what our guy wants to do. We'll go from there. So, stay tuned because this is going to be a very good video. Happening Z Hood. Yeah. All right, I'm back. Verdict is in. We're going to go ahead and dive into this thing. We're going to pull the upper intake, all the plumbing, motor mounts. I think coils have to come off. I know the wires come out. Uh, I think I can get away with leaving the alternator here, maybe, maybe not, but we're going to go down past this upper intake, get to that lower intake, pop that thing off the engine, clean it up, reseal it, and reassemble. I've got some parts on the way, so uh, let's get to it because this might be a long kind of video. It's about a six hour job. All right, let's get started. Uh, battery's already disconnected. We're going to start from the beginning. We'll just start pulling off some of these sensors here and then uh, we'll pop this uh, intake tube and air filter out and work our way over towards the manifold. We'll get all of this supporting equipment, wiring harnesses and whatnot removed, and then we can unbolt this uh, intake. That's gonna be the uh, order of operations. Pull this guy out. Grab it right here and just kind of slide. Come on now, come off. There we go. Okay. That's our tube. Come up 
and out. So one of my most favorite uh, things about this particular job is you can do most of it with a pocket screwdriver and a 10 millimeter. You can get pretty far with just, uh, just those two tools. Anyway, right now I'm pulling off the uh, throttle cables. Those are disconnected, we'll just set those aside. Let's go ahead and disconnect our clips for our wiring harnesses. That one there, that one there. Got a vacuum line right here, let's pop that guy out. Don't need that for right now. Okay, going a little farther back, we've got a fuel line right here. Let's get that guy disconnected. Come on. Again with the pocket driver. Two clips. Fuel line removed. And coming around, we've got one more fuel line here and this evap line right here. Let's just pop that guy off next. Come on, you. Or I'll take the whole assembly. Why not? There we go. That's even better. Fuel line number two. Push that in, push it in right here. That's that whole harness can then be set aside right up here. There we go. Okay, right in front of us, we've got a couple more connectors. These ones are uh, for the fuel injectors. All this stuff has to come off. Pop that one. This one right here, that's gonna come apart. Unclick. And we can get to that third and or second injector right here. Pop that guy loose. Wiggle it. Come on. Oh, got it. Here's the connector. We need to lose that one. One more injector on the other side. You've never been removed before. Got that one. Map sensor next. One loom harness right over here. You guys see that? No, you can't. One connector there. And we've got this big connector over here. I'll go ahead and detach this and then we can take this whole harness and flop it over to that side. We'll just push this little rocker locker thing down. Rocker locker. And that disconnects and we can unconnect it from this support beam here. Now, this all moves off to the side. Uh, I'm probably gonna pull this engine mount out to get more uh, wiring harness space and we'll just keep tucking everything away from the engine until we can get down to uh, down to the goods. All right, moving around back, I pulled off three more fuel injector connectors. We've got to lose this uh, alternator connector right here. So let's pop that guy out. Again, pocket screwdriver. We have needed no tools except for this so far. And, oh, that's a, that's a 13 mil. Hmm. Okay, so foot and mouth. I needed something besides a 10. Early on, no worries though. We'll tuck that aside. All right, I'm preparing to start on bolting this uh, upper intake, but we've got a little bracket shield thing here for the EGR valve. We need to pull this off. 10 millimeter bolt right here, and that's bolt gravity. Don't worry, I know where it went. There's another one right down here. So what I'll do, pull this shield thing out, I'll put the bolt back in it and we'll set that aside. Now we're getting somewhere. Which is straight down because we have to pull the fuel rail uh, and the injectors out of this thing. The uh, bolts for this upper intake are captured by the fuel rail so it's, it's very much in the way. It's just four bolts. Pull that next one down. Two over here, four nuts, two here and then two over here on the other side. There's that one. And number four, down off, to, gravity, down off to the right. There she is. 
Oh, we need to get these uh, spark plug wires out of the way too, I think, at some point. Yeah, here's one of those bolts that's uh, captured by the rail. Do you see that thing down there? We won't be able to uh, access those with this fuel rail in place, so let's pop that thing up next. Real easy peasy, we're gonna pull this out with a pry bar. Just gonna get under it, apply some up pressure, and the injectors pop right out of their home. There's the second one, and it looks like the rear side already started to come up. So the fuel rail is uh, now free and loose. And we'll slide this guy right on out. Okay, let's go ahead and back up and we're gonna pull these uh, spark plug wires out and uh, remove all this stuff. Now, I'm gonna put some plug wires in this because this stuff is uh, all OE. So I can just go ahead and pull these guys out. We'll run them through the motor mount and just get these out of the way completely. And pocket screwdriver to save the day because these wires are captured by a, a little clip here. We'll pop the clip. I don't even know if you guys can see. And we'll set that aside and reuse it later. Okay, wires coming through. You gotta do these uh, sort of one at a time, because if not, the boots will all jam up together and get caught behind this engine mount right here. And then, uh, then you can't pull them through. Same thing when installing them. You can't send it through in like a bunch. So that's out of the way. Uh, these front bank wires are not a problem right now, so I'm just gonna leave those on the spark plugs and we'll come back to those after the uh, top of this engine is stripped down. There we go. Just put those down there for later. Bye. Okay, we do not have much holding this uh, upper intake back on. We've got a couple bolts, four and four, and then this little guy right here. So, oh, there's one. There's probably, yeah, one there and one there. So let's pull all these bolts out and get this thing popped out of position. 10 millimeter coming in. Ah, the nut didn't come off. The bolt came with it. See that? That's fine. There's another 10 mil over here on this side. It's deep well, I can't reach it. Wobbly socket change. Now I can reach it. Get rid of that one. That's one of the long ones. All right, let's run through and get all the bolts holding down this uh, upper manifold. This unit will be reused. We don't have to put a new one on it, unless it's broken. Oh, you know what? I think I forgot a couple fasteners up there by the throttle body. Need to go and check on that before I try to pry this thing up. That's how we break stuff. Put those aside. One more little guy back here. And let's go up front to the throttle body and check that for bolts. Yeah, yeah, we've got a bracket right here and there might be another one on the other side. Okay, All right, let's get that guy down there next. Unclick. It's tight. Okay. That is no matter. I'll break it loose uh, manually. Unclickage. Good. Now I'll spin you out. Okay. And I think, I think that's it. Yeah, she should be free. It's a little captured by this bracket, but we can work around that uh, very carefully. Let's back up some. Okay, get a hold of this guy. We're gonna tilt it up and forward past that little bracket. Uh, she's free, I think, and we'll slide it under this little harness right here. Begin the sliding. Oh, hang on, the uh, vacuum hose for the booster is hanging me up. I forget that like every time. Every time I forget to take off my hoses. Okay, so here's our lower intake assembly. We have to pull this guy off next because our gaskets are on the side here, on the side here, and then there's another set of gaskets that bolt this thing to the cylinder heads. So we've got to pull all that stuff off. Also, if you look way down inside of there, we can see the intake valves on all the runners. Very nice. So next up, we need to lose 
the EGR tube right here, this bracket for the nader, and I don't know if I have to pull that alternator out or not. Uh, I may, I may not. We'll, uh, we'll determine that in a moment. So here, let's go ahead and spray this EGR tube with some penetrating lubricant. And while that's soaking in a little bit more, we'll go ahead and pull this bracket off over here. This is a 10 mil and a, a 15 over here. Pull off that nut, unclick this. Come on, bracket. Now I can move this harness out of the way a little bit, a little bit farther. There we go. Now, I don't think we have to, but I'm gonna remove this bracket right here as well, because it's gonna be a really tight squeeze to try to get this intake out of here. I think I could sneak it out without pulling these off. It's just two more bolts, so why not? What? Ah, got gotcha. you. There we go. All right, it's been a few minutes. Let's work on this uh, EGR tube real quick. Unclick that. One more right here. That one's loose. And we'll go ahead and pull these guys out. There we go. Slide that guy back, and this should just wiggle up and out of here. Kind of a kind of a tight squeeze, but it comes out. Good thing this is a flexi pipe. And uh, oh, come on, you don't make a liar out of me. Let's try the other side. I will pry bar you. Here it comes. Flashlight. There we go, got her. That's gonna be fun to put back later. All righty, next, we're gonna move this harness aside again. Lose that connector and we're gonna pull this thermostat housing out of here. Unpick, please. Nope. Here, we'll try a different 10. That one's not working. That one is. Come on. All right, that one's super tight. Yeah, it is. Holy smokes. Come on, there we go. Now it's not super tight. Come here. All right. Oh, by the way, I've also uh, sucked out a bunch of the coolant. We're still gonna get some spillage, but the level should be down pretty low. Thermostat's junk. That's nasty. Yeah, yeah, look. All that oil on there has made this soft and squishy, so I'm gonna put a thermostat in this as well. Oily coolant is not good. Oh, speaking of oil and coolant, there are, uh, well, the passages are uh, down inside of these gaskets for oil and coolant to pass through, and uh, when we remove this intake, whatever coolant is uh, present within this intake is going to spill down into the, uh, the rocker arm valley where the push rods are and it's going to contaminate the engine oil. So it is mandatory that we uh, replace the engine oil and do a very thorough oil change after uh, finishing this procedure. So we're almost ready to uh, go ahead and start to unbolt this lower, but um, I'm going to remove this uh, torque mount over here. It's not exactly necessary but it'll give me a little bit more space to maneuver, so I am gonna go ahead and pull this guy out. So what I'm gonna do is break these nuts loose and pull these bolts out on these torque mounts. There's one. Number two, right here. Gravity, come here. Save the day. Alright, there's one torque mount. 
put that bolt back in there so it doesn't have to get lost. There we go. We have two more 15 millimeter bolts. It's gonna hold on to this aluminum housing uh, and that's what I want to uh, get out of the way here. And a 15, I'm sorry, 13 over here on the other side. And I think that one's, yeah, 13 as well. Break those loose, zip them out. Number two, switch it out to the 13. And then we can pull this plastic, or plastic, we can pull this aluminum bracket out of position. Wow, I'm so used to cars being made out of plastic that when I find metal parts, I don't know what to call them. That's a, that's a new one. Um, Okay, so listen, this wiring harness right here is bothering me and I don't like it. So I am gonna go ahead and pull this mount out as well. That way I can just toss this all the way over and get it out of the way so I can maneuver this uh, lower intake manifold off the engine. Okay, that's out of the way. We'll just slide that right on over and now we've got a lot more space to uh, maneuver ourselves around over here. And we're gonna need that. I'm not gonna hide this one too far. That's an easy one to forget. That's a uh, coolant temp sensor. Leave that attached. Here, I upped it to the uh, 3 8 impact. That's more better. guys I think that's not all of them I'll show you what I mean in just a moment whoa all right so you see how this corner head two right here and here that corner head two if you're ever doing this particular job all four corners have two bolts okay now the ones that we didn't see are actually hidden inside of that pool of oil right about here. Yep, got it. Just. Yep, it's in there. Yeah. That's a sneaky one. And there's another sneaky one right here in this pool of oil. There it is. Okay, now. That lower should be completely unbolted. It's not disconnected because there is a coolant bypass elbow right here, that little uh, little plastic elbow. Uh, again, if you're ever doing this job, you're gonna need to buy that because you will not be able to take this thing off and uh, reuse or even remove this without breaking that elbow right there. It's gonna be brittle and old and it's gonna crack and it's gonna break. If you try to reuse it, you're probably going to crack it and damage it and then you won't realize until you put coolant in the thing and it leaks out and you're doing the same job all over again because you can't get that thing installed without either removing this lower or removing this entire accessory drive bracket okay so to break this thing loose we're just going to get a pry bar under it right here give it a little bit of up if it does not break free very loosely then uh, that's going to tell us that we missed a bolt so it's free now what we need to do is angle it up slide it that way because we have to pull the intake outside or off of that little elbow that's in there so all we got to do is hold this up one hand we'll go behind it over here with the pry bar and just slide it on over this is pretty much the procedure to reinstall but you'll have to be very careful while doing it because let's get this apart because there are gaskets and seals right here on the edge of this uh, engine block. And here's our little elbow. Uh, like I just mentioned, it has become broken. So we need to extract this guy. And it has disintegrated. So now we need to break it apart and pluck the pieces out of this uh, water jacket right here. Because that thing's not gonna, it's not gonna come out. Here, let's try the needle nose treatment here. Maybe if I wiggle it, it'll break loose. 
No, it's just gonna break, okay? So I need to remove this thing in pieces. That's how that's gonna work. Nice. Here, let's try the pocket screwdriver method. I just need to kind of get behind it and dig the thing out. It's, yeah, that's in there. Okay. Come on out of there. It's just gonna come out in pieces. That's how it's gonna be. Yeah, we're just gonna keep on scraping away until we kind of dig a hole through that plastic. Yeah. Oh, you know what? You guys are gonna be mad at me for something. I better, I better protect that valley so little plastic pieces don't uh, fall into there. All right, we're kind of close. I chipped away a bunch of it. Yeah, there we go. She's coming out. Okay. Nah, that's half of it. There's more in there. Yeah, there's a whole, there's a whole another piece down in there. That's the piece with the seal on it. It's actually what I didn't want to happen. I wanted it to come out kind of as a whole piece. Oh, here it comes. There's the seal. That's the O-ring. Get rid of that. And then more chunks of plastic. Get rid of that. All right, that's all of them. That's all the pieces. There we go. Good to go. All right, a little bit of sandpaper in there to clean up my scratches and any of the debris or whatever that is stuck on that ceiling surface because that new piece that goes in is uh, gonna have an O-ring on it and we can't have uh, screwdriver scratches or pry marks or plastic chunks getting in the way. So we've got to clean that up very nice like it's better. This is actually like a twisty uh, sander for uh, porting cylinder heads. There we go. That's nice. Come here. Cool, nice and smooth. We're good to proceed now. Let's get this out of here. There's some trash on it. Okay. All right, let's go ahead and do a 180 real quick and we're gonna check out this uh, lower intake manifold. We're gonna clean this thing up, but I, I wanna go over the gaskets and everything on this unit first. So we've got the, uh, the gasket here. This one goes against the cylinder head between the manifold. Another one on the other side. Right here, we've got a coolant passage, coolant passage, and I think there's another one. Yeah, not that one. That's not a coolant passage. This one, that's not a passage either. So yeah, there's there's just the two passages through it, but we can see right here, see the gasket? It is coming apart and deteriorating. So this thing cannot hold back the coolant. That same thing right here, because these passages uh, are present on the cylinder head. So anyway, this is the area right here where the coolant and the oil can communicate, uh, causing the mixture of that oil sludgy coolant business going on there. So we are going to remove these units and get rid of them these orange guys those are the uh the block seals and it, although those do not leak coolant uh once this thing's deteriorated to a, a position where we do see oil leaking out of the side of the block here then we know that the interior gaskets uh, have also failed so those are gone we'll get rid of these things in the trash we no longer need those now what we need to do is go back to our engine, clean up all of our sealing surfaces, and we will uh, prepare for reassembly. All right, I have wheeled over the shop vac, and we're gonna go ahead, power this guy on, and we're gonna clean out uh, all this nonsense down here. Get rid of all this debris, everything that fell down inside the valley right here, we'll get rid of all the dirt. 
all these little plastic chunks, etc., etc. Bree, why did you do that before you took everything apart? You're contaminating the engine. Whee! All right, that's pretty good for now. Shop vac powering down. Okay, cleaning phase two. Spray some uh, penetrating oil on everything. Oil's an excellent cleaner, by the way. There we go. Let that soak in all nice like, like that tussing. I'm a robot tussing. I broke my leg, daddy pawn robot tussing on it. Boy, let that tussing get in there, boy. So now we're in a position where we can go over this thing with a towel, clean off as much of this nasty as we can, make it nice and shiny. Get that side. You'll often find that there's some silicone sealant on these uh, engine block bridges, and uh, that must be uh, picked away as well. No debris, nice and clean. There we go. Very nice. Shiny. I mean, it's not shiny yet, but we're getting there. Contaminating the oil. No, we're gonna ruin the lifters. Have no fear. I've done this once or twice. Go back over it again, wipe it down. I think we have all the debris. It's still pretty rough, the sealing surface on the cylinder heads. I'm gonna go over this with a light, light abrasive wheel and clean up the rest of this stuff. It's, it didn't clean up like I wanted it to. We see all the witness marks from the old gasket. That's, uh, that's actually raised and it is scrape offable. So we're gonna get rid of that too. Going back in. Okay, we're gonna use a pneumatic little ziz wheel tool with these little fingery bristles and uh, that's gonna help to polish off all those deposits. <coughs> Loud noises, incoming. Here, let's go over here. Now you guys can see a little bit better. You're a little closer to the action. <coughs> Actually, I've changed my mind. I'm not gonna use the bristly type. <coughs> use the uh, abrasive wheel type because I don't want those bristles to fly off and end up in the engine. Light, light pressure on this and I'm never staying in one spot at the same time. looking good beautiful nice clean surfaces oh fun fact this is part of the head gasket right here see that little gasket right there that's head gasket this is head gasket uh, in case you're interested the lifters are down here in the block and right here 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 and all the way across on that side those are the push rods for the rocker arms and this is the balancing shaft right yeah okay beautiful so here's what we're gonna do next I'm gonna get the vacuum back out and the blow gun, and we're gonna go through and blow out these intake ports while sucking everything out with a vacuum, and that's gonna stir up any debris that's made its way inside of there, and then extract it from those ports, that way it can't enter the cylinder head. Or the combustion chamber, 
rather, excuse me, combustion chamber. Shot back, powering on. Next on the list is get rid of any contaminants that are hanging out here in the intake valley, like that little piece of dirt right there. And that, we're just gonna go ahead and wash that right on down into the engine. This is the part where some of you guys are really gonna lose it. We're just gonna dump some oil on everything that we sprayed off, rinse it all down real nice like, dump it down into the oil pan because later you can drain everything back out. Goodbye, debris. Because vacuuming will only go so far. Gotta rinse that stuff. And a little bit more over here on this side. There we go. Nice. Now the valley is clean. The heads are clean. The intake ports are clean. Everything right here is clean. And in order to keep it clean, let's just toss some towels in here just in case anything gets blown back into this engine compartment, we don't uh, contaminate our clean sections. We'll stuff some of these inside of the ports. Stuff that one in there. Stuff that one in there. Stuff that one in there, good to go. Okay, let's go ahead and clean up the intake manifold next, and then we can continue to prepare this for our reassembly. So let's get out of here, move back over to the manifold and the oil drain. All right, let's go ahead and perform a similar procedure right here on our uh, lower intake manifold. Let's clean all this nasty off of here. Nice. A little bit more. we go super shiny too weak let's give this thing a little bit more spray get rid of the micro deposit and then we'll inspect it for any mist uh, sealant or gasket material get all this oil and stuff off of here too and we can clean the ports out So this is the bottom side. We still have some uh, cleansing to do on the top side. Oh, okay, flip. See why I'm doing this in the oil drain? That way I don't have to mop up all this nasty that I've, uh, that I've created here. Get rid of that. The rat poop. Continuing decontamination. All right, we're getting there. Don't know where we're getting to, but we're getting there. Yep, we're getting more shinier. Look, I missed a spot. Just another spot. Yeah, that's all like carbon buildup and stuff. You gotta, you gotta get rid of that. It has some thickness to it. Now, over here, this area is particularly important. Particularly important words. 
because these two holes right here are coolant passages. And if, uh, if there's a bunch of pitting here or you don't get all that uh, super clean, then that coolant's actually gonna leak out and it'll just run into the uh, intake. And then uh, you'll be running on coolant and dumping coolant into your oil, um, causing a failed repair. That would be bad. Clean the EGR tube out while I'm here. A little bit. Oh, I'm out. Oh, no! All right, next I'm gonna go in with the low pressure brake clean just to hose the rest of this all down. Get as clean as we can. Actually, this one's particularly nasty. I might take this out and pressure wash it. Who knows? Yeah, it's cleaning up okay. Just my solvent. Super shiny. Make it look shiny. Yummy! Look at that. We broke a lot of debris loose, so this definitely needs to be uh, kind of hosed out, so to speak. All right, let's go ahead and let this thing dry. We'll wipe it down again later on. Actually, uh, speaking of later on, um, I don't have my parts yet for this thing. So I don't have my gasket set, don't have much. So uh, it's five o'clock and uh, I think I'm about to uh, pack the show up and get on out of here and go home. So uh, that being said, as always, I'm gonna go ahead and thank you guys for watching this video. Hope you enjoyed this video. If you did enjoy this video, I really hope to see you over on part two. I will have that out as soon as possible. So that being said, before I go off on some crazy ramble tangent, tangent words again, and as always, thank you guys for watching this video. And most importantly, do not forget to have yourselves a great day. See you guys later. End of transmission.